What if I told you you never have to look outside of yourself again for the power to create your own growth and expansion and success? I'm Deborah Peters. Welcome back. Thank you for joining me today. I'm going to unpack how to tap into the greatest, most infinite power that exists in the world, in the universe, <laughs> in you. And I'm going to share with you how to apply it in your life just on the fly. You know, this stuff does not have to be complicated. But before I do that, I want to just pause and say thank you to everyone that has been supporting my channel, sharing my videos, commenting. Really, really, really appreciate all of you. And also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and make sure you hit that bell button because then as I upload new content, you'll get a little alert in your inbox. All right, so let's get going. My um, inspiration came from Napoleon Hill's work. And what's so inspiring to me about that is how the manuscript came together and how the whole experience that he had hanging out with Andrew Carnegie and, and our captains of industry, our founding fathers of the United States of America, and what he took from that and then what we actually got exposed to and what we actually have access to in terms of tools and information because there's a big gap between what he was actually exposed to and witnessed and what was actually published in the books. So pretty much everything is there except for the most pivotal life-changing, game-changing, secret sauce that you could ever ask for, and that is all about the mastermind. We've been conditioned to think that in order to create a movement, in order to have change take place, that we have to get together with others. We have to have others agree with us. We have to have others subscribe to our belief systems. We have to have others validate us. We have to have others accept us and join with us because there's more strength in numbers. That's a really common statement. And that, you know, when two or more are gathered and, and like the kind of, which completely got misinterpreted by most people, by the way, the, the kind of, um, belief system that you have to have a team thinking the way you think in order for you to get what you want to get in life. Now, I'm not suggesting that you shouldn't have people that are supporting you and involved with you and because, you know, there's just more talent than you could ever possibly imagine on the planet. And those people want to help you and they want to support you and they want to work with you on something really great. But that's not the conversation we're having. The conversation we're having is about really getting to understand what the mastermind is all about and then utilizing it on the fly in every part of your life every day. It's not something you have to go sit on a mountaintop for. It's not something you have to go you know, to some remote, remote part of the planet and be by yourself. 10, 15 minutes of meditation in the morning on a daily basis and you're set. You know, if you have time later in the day and you feel like you've fallen out of alignment, you can always pop back into your chair and do another 10 or 15 minute tune up. I mean, why not, right? So here's what's interesting about Napoleon Hill's experience and that is he was privy to some really powerful tools that were utilized to overcome some of the greatest obstacles that were had to be addressed in order to build this country, in order to forge ahead and to create conveniences and, and some ease and some flow. And, and obviously it led to industrialization in America and, then, and, and other parts of the world that followed. But he was, he was subjected to and had access to the really magical piece 
of what brought that all together and what made that happen. And it was the mastermind. And although on the outside, it looks like the mastermind was these boys getting together and supporting each other in their dreams and their goals and, you know, slapping each other on the back and cheering each other on. But the pieces that got edited out of the manuscript and are not in the books to any great depth are all about vibration and that the mastermind really isn't with other people, you see, because actually the, the challenge of trying to mastermind with other people is not only do you get their support, but you also get their limitations because we're all human beings and we all have our own set of limiting beliefs. We have our own set of limiting decisions and negative emotions. It's just part of being a human being. We've all been programmed and we all get to unwind that programming and create new programming. So when you're masterminding with other people, that's the first hiccup is not only are you getting the support, but you're also getting the limitations. Energetically, that's part of the dynamic when you involve yourself with other people. Now, the other problem, I guess, if that's the word, with masterminding with others is I see it as a way of negating your own sovereignty, your own connection to your infinite power. The minute you tell yourself that you have to have someone else support you, that you have to have someone else approve, that you have to have someone else's energy, power, attention, validation to come along and, and anoint your idea, your goal, your direction, then you completely negate your ability to co-create with your higher self. Now we could call that higher self whatever you want, higher self, the universe, God, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, you call it what you like. The bottom line is it's an unseen force that we can choose to connect into. And I use the word choice because it is a decision or we can choose to separate ourselves from and then deal with the experience of resistance, the uh, experience of struggle, the experience of suffering. So this is the piece that is left out of the material. And one of the reasons I really like studying Florence Scovel Shin, who's written quite a few books, and my favorite is The Game of Life, and how to, is the game of life and how to play it um, is because she really gets into the masterminding with your creator, the masterminding with infinite intelligence, with infinite wisdom, with that unseen force that flows through every molecule of your being and actually emanates from your heart and your solar plexus and you know this whole like energy channel that runs throughout our body is exactly that they're, ch they're energy channels and you can tap into them just with a thought it's really that simple call it in the bottom line is this you have to want to go beyond who you currently are. It has to be a desire, you see? Without the desire, there can never be a choice. So I feel that when people don't desire to grow, that a stagnation takes place. And when you're stagnating, it's like you're actually going backwards. You know, you're getting further and further away from who you're supposed to be in this lifetime. 
So when you step forward and you just simply ask, and I will do this when I'm out in nature, I do this when I meditate, I do this throughout the day, when I'm taking little breaks from my work, I'll stand up, stretch, walk around, grab a glass of water, and I will ask, please come into me. Thank you for coming into me. Thank you for guiding me. Thank you for showing me. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for lifting my thoughts beyond my current experiences, my current circumstances, my current reality, and for allowing me and inspiring me to receive higher levels of thought, higher levels of awareness, higher levels of possibility. And I do that all the time. Like that is a normal way I function in my day every single day. And I may do it out loud. I, in fact, I do it out loud a lot when I'm walking down the street and I'm talking to myself and I don't have an earbud in. So clearly I'm talking to no one other than me, right? But I'm really having a conversation with the power that creates worlds. And I am inviting that power to work through me. And so that's really all it takes. That is the ultimate, that is the quintessential mastermind. And when you start to tap into that, so much about your world, so much about your reality, so much about your business grows and changes and evolves. And what happens is, is first of all, the first thing that happens is, is the sense of peace comes over you. And with that peace comes a heightened awareness of possibility because you, you, it, what it does is it, it like, it stops the resistance, you know, the striving, the struggling, the making it happen, the grinding it out, the tactics that have to be deployed to get people to do things and the numbers to grow. I mean, all of that is just like really old school thinking and it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So when you're exhausted, you, you just, you think you're alone. You know, when you're exhausted mentally, when you're exhausted emotionally, when you're exhausted spiritually because you're pushing the boulders uphill every day in your company, when you're exhausted physically, then the struggle is truly real. So the point here is to move past this antiquated methodology of control and numbers driven, top down. You have to look outside of yourself for the answers kind of concept to your business and your life and to rather go inside and make that connection and ask that connection to guide you, to show you, to inspire you. And then when that information comes, when that thought comes, when that idea comes, do it, do it. Don't wait, don't put it off, don't write it down on a piece of paper and say, okay, I'm gonna do this tomorrow. Do it now. And that's when the quantum leaps happen. So for all of you that are wondering, you know, how do I like make a big jump forward or a big leap forward? I just gave you the answer. So the thing is, is that you have to reach for it. You, if you want to be more, you have to reach for more. And sometimes reaching for more is just, you know, putting your arms in the air and saying, I am willing to change. I am willing to let go of what I think has to be done or has to be a certain way. And I am willing to receive an easier path, the path of least resistance. And then you need to show up and you need to show up by doing the work. So I'm not saying that you don't work. I'm not saying that you lying around on your sofa, you're going to work. You're just working from a different place within yourself. Instead of a place of separation, 
where everything is hard and a struggle and competitive and and you have to you know earn the favors of those above you so that you can climb the ladder all of that is nonsense <laughs> i'm sorry if you're super corporate and that's you know your religion but it's the truth it's just nonsense and it's why people are pissed off and it's why people are unfulfilled and it's why people get sick physically ill because they just can only take so much of it and then they just have to step out of it take a day off or a week off or a month off or you know depending on what it is you need to escape from I guess the, the heat and the heaviness of that so that's my unpacking of the true mastermind for you and I hope that helps you in your business I hope that changes how you approach your team and um, I hope that has an impact on your value proposition because this is the kind of shift that attracts a lot of clients that have a great appreciation for what you have to offer. And how could it be more fulfilling than that, right? All right, thank you so much for tuning in. It's Deborah Peters, have a blessed day, bye.